Okay. First, we give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the one who is head of our life. We just so great and thankful just for another day, another chance, another opportunity that He has given us as we live, move, and have our being to be about God business. And we stop by just to say thank you. Thank you for your grace, and we thank you for your mercy. Let us bow our head in a word of prayer. Our Father, our Father in heaven again, we come before you. We come that the humble every knows how. We come first of all just to say thank you, for we thank you for your grace, and we thank you for your mercy. We thank you how you have took care of us down through the years. You have told your children that you will never leave us, neither you forsake us, but you be with us even into the end of the world. And we know before one jot till of your words shall fail, heaven and earth shall pass away. And Lord, as we enter into your service, ask the Lord to give us the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding. We need that we may be able to bring forth the word that it will plead in, in your sight. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. As we look at for the message today, our message is concerning uh, uh, John, out of the book of John, St. John, book of St. John, the 15th chapter, 18th through the 27th verse. Also St. John, the 16th chapter, 1st through the 33rd verse. And our subject today. Jesus is preparing the hearts of those that follow him in his earthly ministry. As we look at this coming through the earthly ministry, we are not dealing with the body of Christ. For this particular time, Jesus had walked by the seashore and told them to follow me and I make you fishermen of men. That is not church doctrine. This is doctrine of the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The king is here to bring forth this message. Amen. That not the church, because the church couldn't begin until Jesus had died on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Then he called Apostle Paul to bring forth that message, what we call the grace of God. Amen. Whole Bible is true, but you have to put it in its proper place and timing. When you talk about Paul's letter, you're not talking about Genesis and all the way through the scriptures. Amen. Uh, and all the way through even Mark and Luke and John, all of that there is dealing with the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. That not church doctrine. Amen. It's good. The whole book is good. But you have to place it in its own order. The Bible tells us these words. He says, study. Show yourself approval in the God, a workman that need not be ashamed. He said, rightly dividing the word of truth. Himself to what he's saying, place it in the right order. Amen. And when you place it in the right order, all these orders will come. Amen. And you can get an understanding out of the old. You can get an understanding out of the quail, and then you can get the uh, most understanding for our age of the church out of Paul's letter, from Roman to Philemon. Amen. The whole book is right. Amen. And it was God, God brought forth this whole book, but he brought it in different timing. God is a God of time. Amen. And sister and brother, this message today is dealing with uh, not Paul, but the quail. The quail that 
followed Jesus in his earthly ministry. Jesus walked by the seashore and said, come follow me. I make you fishermen of men. Uh, that not the church. Well, how much did the church know about Paul's letter? They didn't have a clue. Amen that the church would come. Why? Jesus didn't teach them concerning the church. Well, what did Jesus teach them? Thing concerning, amen, uh, his earthly ministry. Amen. amen. God ha have a way, sister and brother, and now you have to look at it whose way? You got to look at it God's way. Amen. And sister and brother, if I don't put it in a proper place and timing, I quote the scriptures, but it don't have no meaning because I have took it out of its content, which is a no-no, not according to scriptures. Amen. So this message here is dealing with when Jesus come to the quail and how were they saved? They were not saved that we are. They were saved by thou art the Christ, the Son of a living God. Amen. And, and sister and brother, that's all they had to know. That's what brought them. And then they were baptized. And then, sister and brother, but what about us in the age of the church? Were we saved today by saying, Thou art the Christ who recognized in him? Amen. And the Christ? No. It won't work that way. But how are we saved today? We are saved today by Jesus, death bearer, and his resurrection. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's how we are saved, sister and brother. We are saved by grace. Amen. And there, there was uh, not grace, but law. You have to put it in the proper place. Whole book is right. Amen. From Genesis to Revelation. But we have to, when we put it in order for the age of the church, you're going to get them message from Paul letters. Roman to Polymon. Amen. And we're going to have a great understanding. But we're talking about this day. We're talking about Jesus. Amen. Is the one. Amen. Uh, who come and they followed Jesus when Jesus walked by the seashore and said come follow me. And what I'll do I make you fishermen of men. So this doctrine, amen, of the grace of God at this particular time when Jesus was, amen, dealing with his quail. And Jesus began to talk to them and let him, them know the world hate. How the world hated him while he was on the face of the earth. They hated him. Then Jesus also began to speak to them and tell them if, he, if they hated Jesus, then they will hate you also. Amen. Amen. So that we can get a learning from that. Even in our time. Amen. Sister and brother, uh, Christian is some of the hatest people in the world. They don't, people don't care too much about a Christian, not all, but a lot of people don't hear too much about Jesus. Amen. But God has a plan. Let's look at it as Jesus dealing with uh, his earthly peoples. Let's look at the 18th verse. Let's look at the 15th chapter and the 18th verse. Jesus began to speak. Amen. If the world hate you, Talking about the old Christian who were back there in that time, and sister and brothers, ye know that it hated me before. It hated you. So not only Christian are being hated, but Jesus said they hated him. They hated him when he was walking on the face of this earth. Now he is warning the people 
they also, amen, they hated him. And now they also let them know you will be hated if you have faith in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us as we go on down to this 19th verse, if you were in the world, that means if you don't have accept Jesus at that particular time. Amen. He is saying that if you were of the world, the world would love him. Anyone love the world, the world would love him. Amen. Love his own. But because you are not of the world, they had accepted Jesus Christ. They had recognized who he was. Thou art the Christ. Always remember, when you back there in John, amen, sister and brother, Jesus hadn't died. And then for the age of the church, Jesus had to die on the cross of Calvary. And he brought forth the church. But this is a church doctrine. This is dealing with the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But he didn't stop that. He went on and said, But I have chose you out of the world. Amen. Talking about those who had accepted Jesus Christ at that particular time. God of the God of timing. The Bible tells us, Amen. Therefore the world hates you. Amen. The world hate well hating back there then, sister and brother. Well, what about the day? As far as the world concerned, a lot of people don't have nothing for Jesus to do because they don't know who he is. Amen. The Bible tells us, as we go on down to this 20th verse here, remember the word, the word that I said unto you. The servant is known not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, Amen. Jesus talking about the persecution with those people and how they persecuted him. Amen. And he's telling his disciples about it. They will also persecute you. If they did me that way, Jesus is saying, they will do the very same thing to you. Amen. If they have kept my saying, they will keep your saying. Amen. He was saying they would keep the saying if they know who Jesus were. But they didn't know who he was. So they didn't have nothing for Jesus to do. And not only they didn't have nothing for Jesus to do, they didn't have nothing for the followers of Jesus. Amen. They didn't have nothing, amen, for him and his followers. The Bible tells us, amen, let me look at this 21st verse here. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake. Because of the name of Jesus. When you begin to tell people about the name of Jesus, sister and brother, with that mindset they have, they'll start to scratch and say, oh, let me go, I've got to leave here. Amen, don't be heard. Amen, but ain't God good. Amen. We ought to want to hear the Lord, but they don't want to hear it until they come to the Lord. The Bible says, because they know not him that sent me. They know not the Father. That's what Jesus said, talking about the one who sent him. And we go on down to this 22nd verse here. If I had, amen, if I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not have sinned, but now they, amen, have no cloak for their sin. Amen. He that hates me, hate my father. Amen. No love for the Jesus, no love for the Father, and then don't love. No love for the followers of Jesus Christ. Also, the Bible tells us as we move on down to this 24th verse, If I have not come among them, the work which 
now uh, knowing other man did, they have not, amen, they had not had sin, but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Amen. Talk about the world. The one that don't make Jesus their choice. The one who didn't, amen, said thou art the Christ back there at that particular time. But he didn't stop there. He went on and said, but this come to pass. Amen. That the world might be, amen, be fulfilled that it is written in the in their law. They hated me without a cause. Amen. You know, sister and brother, as a Christian, in our day, you don't have to do anything for people to hate you. Amen. All you have to do is put your confidence and trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. As it were back there then, it like that now. A lot of people won't even talk to you if you're a Christian. They don't want to be heard. Amen. And that's the way it was back there then, and that's the way it is now. And Jesus, they warning his peoples, the one who had, Jesus had accept, amen, and telling them what's going to happen and what to look out for. And telling them how mankind will be about, amen, them because they had accept Jesus Christ for their personal Savior. What that mean to us? You ain't got to do nothing to a person to hate you. Amen. Amen. All you got to do is love Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. And love peoples. And even love the sinners. Amen. And yet, they don't have any love for you. That's that, that, that the Bible. God said it. And this is what we have to put our confidence in. Amen. The Bible tells us as we move on down to this 26 verse. But when the comforter. Now this is speaking about who is the comforter. Who is this speaking about? The Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. When Jesus, when the Holy Ghost come, what did the Holy Ghost uh, teach us? Teach us about Jesus. Amen. They were doing that then back then, sister and brother, but now but at the same time, in our time, the Holy Spirit, who did he teach us about? He teach us about Jesus. Oh, I hope we see this. Amen. And this is the way we can know him. But sister and brother, the man that don't know Jesus, he don't have the comforter. So he don't have nothing but the devil to Feed him with things concerning the thing of this life. And this why I come that hate is in the heart towards our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But not only the Lord Jesus Christ, but also about his followers. And this, this sister and brother, go all the way through the scriptures. Mankind have always hated God. Amen when they didn't have no God on their side. Amen. They, they had hate then, and guess what? They have that hate now against God program. But you can't defeat it. You can't defeat God's word. Amen. Amen. Let's go on down to the 27th verse here. Amen. And ye also shall bear witness Amen. Because now they got the Holy Spirit saying after they get the Holy Spirit. Because ye have been with me from the beginning. And we move on down to the 16th verse here. Read like this. These thing have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended. 
Amen. Don't you be confident it because how you see the world act and how they begin to treat the Christian. Amen. The Bible tell us, as we go on down to this second verse, Amen. They shall put you out of the synagogue. See that back there? Before our time. Amen. Yes, the time cometh that whosoever kill you will think that they does God's service. They think the right. Amen. Ring who put that in their heart? The devil. That the work of the devil, sisters, brothers and sisters. Amen. The Bible tells us as we move on down to this third verse. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father. Amen. That means they is a saved. Thou art the Christ. They didn't know nothing about who he was. Amen. Nor me. He is saying they didn't know who the Father were, and also they didn't know who He was. Also, they didn't have the precious Holy Ghost. Amen. They didn't have anything that could open up spiritual things to them until they come and accept Jesus Christ for their personal Savior. The Bible tells us as we move on down to the full verse here, Amen. But these things have I told you that which the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And they and those things I said not unto you at the beginning. Amen. But I was with you. Jesus is opening up spiritual thing to them telling them how the he they gonna be hated by the world because of the love that those people had for Jesus Christ amen then now he's dealing coming on down to this fifth verse he gonna deal with the precious Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost who would take us aboard in those believers that is able to teach the truth about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and about God and the Holy Ghost going to do the teaching. Amen. We ought to tell him thank you for thank it. You. Amen. You ain't got to learn him naturally. Why? The natural man know not the things of God. Neither can they know them because they are spiritually discerned. If I'm going to get it, whose way I'm going to get it? I'm going to get it the Jesus way. Whom way I'm going to get it? I'm going to get it God's way. Whom I'm going to get it? Amen. The Holy Ghost way. Because they're all in one unit. Amen. You can believe, amen, all three because they all three Add one. Oh, I hope we can recognize that fact. Amen. Now we're going to deal with the message, amen, of the Holy Spirit that engraved mankind when he made Jesus their choice. And we're going down to this fifth verse. But now, I go my way to him. Talking about Jesus now, go my way to him. Amen. Talking about Jesus, amen, that sent me. Amen. And none of you ask me, where goest thou? You all, Jesus asking the question, said, none of you all ask me, of oh, where are you going? That's what Jesus is saying here. Amen. But the Bible tells us, as we move on down to this sixth verse, because I have said, Amen, these things into you. Sorrow have filled your heart. Amen. But Jesus said, Nevertheless, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. 
Jesus couldn't do no more tell the truth. Amen. The Holy Ghost speak the truth that Jesus speak to him. Amen. The Bible tell us Jesus is saying it is expedient for you that I go away. Because Jesus getting ready to go away and he's going to bring in a new order when he come back this time. He said, the spirit that I go away, for if I go not away, amen, if I just, just stay here with you, amen, you ain't going to have the comforter. How you know? The Bible said, the comforter will not come into you. But if I depart, I will send him into you. Amen. How do we have the Holy Ghost? Jesus has sent the Holy Ghost to us. Amen. We ought to tell him thank you. You ought to tell him thank you because, sister and brother, everything needs to be done in our time. He's already done done it. Amen. We have so much to be grateful and thankful for. Amen. But as they go going down to this eighth verse, amen. And when he is come, when the Comforter, talk about the Holy Ghost, talk about the one who, amen, live within us, who teaches us spiritual things. Amen. When the Comforter come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Amen. A sin because they believe not on me. Going on down to this 10th verse, a righteousness because I go to my Father and amen and ye see me no more. Jesus is talking about leaving. He talking about leaving and dying on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Then he went on and said, also a judgment because the prince there were now, amen, the power going to come. The prince of this world is judge. God have a plan. And God have a way. And God's way is always right. And you can put all your faith and your confidence in the word of God. Jesus continued to speak here. Amen. I have yet many things to say unto you. But ye cannot bear them now. Jesus is saying, Amen. There's some more truths I got to speak to, to you. But Amen. Right now, you can't be able, you don't bear your deeds because you don't have the understanding. Amen. But he didn't stop there. We're going down to this 13th verse. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, Amen. Talk about the Holy Ghost now. Amen. It come. He will guide, amen, you into all truth. Amen, sister and brother. We have something that the world don't have. We got something that the world can't receive until they accept Jesus Christ for their personal Savior. Don't care how good-minded a person may be. If he or she don't know who Jesus is, amen, they don't have the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit isn't in them, they'll never have an understanding of God's word and God's way. He shall not speak, amen, he shall not speak of himself. That's what the Bible says, he ain't, ain't coming and speaking about him, I'm the Holy Ghost, I want you to do this. Amen himself. But whosoever he shall hear, whosoever shall hear, that he shall speak. Amen. And he will show you thing to come. Who is that going to show them thing to come? Not only them, but us. Amen. The Holy Ghost is the teacher. He the one that opened up these truths. Amen to us. The Bible tells us, He shall glorify me. 
For he shall receive a mind and shall show it into you. The Bible tells us as we move on down to this next verse here. All things that the Amen, all things that the Father have a mind. Therefore said I that he shall take a mind and shall show it into you. Who gonna do that? The precious Holy Ghost. Amen, sister and brother. You don't get too far with spiritual things, amen, without the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit lead and guide us into what? All truths. Amen. The Bible tell us, every going down to this 16th verse, a little while. Who is this speaking? This is Jesus. Amen. And ye shall not see, see me. Amen. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me because I go to my Father. Jesus had to leave this world. Amen, such a brother, but he, he come back. After they killed him, he come back on the faith of this earth, but this, this haven't happened yet. This outcome isn't our, in our timing. Amen. I hope we see these truths, but it's for our learning. This is what this message for. This is a message of learning. Amen. The Bible tells us as we move on down to the 17th verse. Amen. Then said some of the disciples among themselves, what is this that he said unto us? They didn't understand what Jesus was saying. Jesus had walked with them three years. Amen. And they didn't have a clue or even what he was saying. Amen. A little while, Jesus is talking about his death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. Amen. And ye shall not see me and again a little while and ye shall see me and because i go to my father amen jesus is talking about something that those people at that particular time didn't have a clue about the holy ghost coming and taking us abode jesus going back to the father amen so this couldn't be church doctrine now, amen, in our time, we must recognize Jesus Christ, amen, have already been dead, and now he have gone back, and now he has sent the Holy Ghost and abided in us to teach us all things concerning Jesus, amen, and the Father. The Bible tells us, as we move on down to this 18th verse, they said, therefore, what, amen, what is this that he says? They didn't have a clue of what Jesus was talking about. Amen. A little while, a little while, we cannot tell what he said. Amen. The Bible tells us, and we move on down to this 19th verse. Now Jesus knew that they were desired to ask him and say unto them, Do you inquire among yourselves, amen, of that I said a little while, and ye shall not, not see me and again? A little while, and ye shall see me. Amen. You want to know what I'm, what I'm speaking about. They didn't have a clue of what Jesus was saying. Jesus had a plan. He had a plan. Amen. And he was finna open up some truth to them that they didn't know about. And he went on and said, as we look at this corner verse, Amen. Verily, verily, truly, truly. Amen. I say unto you that ye shall weep 
Amen and Lemma. That means cry. Amen. But the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be be sorrowful. Amen. For your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Talking about the Christian now, their sorrow gonna end up turning into what? Joy. joy. Somebody wrote a song said, Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Amen. I hope we see, and now Jesus is going to open up a picture of a baby being born in this world. Woman that bringing forth a child in the world. Listen at this, this 21st verse. A woman, amen, when she is in travail, have sorrow. Talking about the pain that she have to bear to bear that baby. Amen. Because her hour is come. Amen. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remember no more of the anguish. Amen. For joy that a man is born into this world. Joy will come. Amen. And that they can have joy after Jesus would come to them. And this is what Jesus is speaking about. Amen. But he used this as a parable. Amen. The Bible tells us as we move on down to this 27th verse, and ye know therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again. Amen. Speaking words of wisdom and joy that they may recognize that down the road, yes, you could have some trials and tribulation, but then joy is going to come. Mm -hmm. On one occasion, he said, joy come in the morning. Mm -hmm. Amen. And your heart shall rejoice, and your joy, amen, your joy, no man take from you. Joy of the Lord in your strength. We need to recognize that fact. Oh, if Jesus is for us, sister and brother, who is it can be against you? We have so much to tell him thank you for. Amen. Amen. He is our everything. Every move on down to this 23rd verse. And in that day, amen, uh, ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever ye shall ask the Father, amen, in my name, amen, he will give it you. That's telling us then how those men could have connection with the Father and with the Son and also, amen, with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, what does he do? He lead and guide us into all truths. Oh, we have so much to tell him. Thank you, don't we? <clears throat> Amen. Uh, hitherto, have you asked nothing in my name? Ask and ye shall receive. Amen. Amen. That your joy may be full. Amen. God have a plan. God has a plan. And he let us to know the word that he is telling them, sister and brother, word that they will be overcoming the world. Amen, sister and brother, by trusting, leaning, and depending upon the Lord. Amen. This 25th verse. Amen. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. Amen. But in time come when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs. But I shall, I shall show you plainly of the Father. Same thing now what the old people, when Jesus was telling them, did they have a clue even what they were talking about? No! Mm -hmm. Amen, but Jesus is saying, a time coming, 
a time coming, sister and brother. But what about us when we were in the world? Amen, did we have anything to know about Jesus? No. But when Jesus, amen, sent the Holy Ghost, sent the Holy Ghost in our heart, mm -hmm. amen, and what did the Holy Ghost teach us things concerning our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? And we had a understanding that we never had before. Amen. We ought to tell him thank you. Amen. The Bible tell us as we move on down to the 26th verse. Amen. At that day, ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. He said, I'm going to pray for the Father for you. Amen. Ain't it good to know, sister and brother, the Lord is on your side? When you have accepted Jesus Christ for your personal Savior, the Lord is on your side. The Holy Ghost is on your side. Gee, God is on your side. The whole Godhead is for you. Amen. If the Godhead is for us, sister and brother, who is it? Can be a guest. Amen, sister and brother. God has so ordained this thing for you and for me. Amen. The Bible tells us as we move on down to this 27th verse, for the Father himself loved you. Amen, sister and brother. You know you the Christian, even in our day, the Father loved you. Mm -hmm. Amen. In that day, the Father loved them. In that day, the Holy Ghost loved them. In that day, Jesus loved them. How can you be defeated? Amen. Because ye have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. Amen. I came forth from the Father and am come into the world again. I leave, amen, I leave the world and go to my father. He was talking about leaving them, sister and brother, and then he was coming back and bring forth what? The age of the church we call the body of Christ. So now, these people hear some things that Jesus has spoke to them, amen, they, that won't their ministry. So, sister and brother, now this ministry is for them what Jesus is speaking to them at that particular time. And the 29th verse, amen. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speak thou through the talks plainly and speak no proverbs. Jesus began to speak to them now in a parable. Amen. The Bible tells us as we go on down to this 30 verse, uh, now you, now are we sure that thou know all things and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou, amen, Thomas forth from God. Now who do they believe in? They believe in, in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have to love Him. Amen. We have to believe in Him. And that's what the old men there are saying. We believe. We believe. What after you believe? They believe that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of a living God. The Bible tells us as we move on down to this 31st verse, Jesus answered them, <clears throat> Do you now believe? So what did Jesus do? Jesus asked them a question because it was something else lacking. Amen. The Bible tells us, as we look at this 32nd verse, Behold, the hour cometh. Jesus is talking about him 
uh, the work that he had to do, amen, and how they will be scattered abroad, amen, behold, the hour will come, yea, it is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone, and yet I am not alone. Amen. Jesus said, I'm not alone. Why, Jesus? Because the Father is with me. Amen. Jesus knew the Father would be with him when all of the people were scattered. And that's exactly what they did when Jesus uh, was dying on the cross of Calvary. Amen. The Bible tells us, if we look at this 33rd verse, these things I have spoke unto you, that in me ye might have peace. Amen. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus have overcome the world, sister and brothers. Amen. Our hope is built on nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Amen, sisters and brothers. Uh, the work has been already done. He did it all right by himself. Why did he do it? Because of one word. And what that word? That word is love. And that word that is love, sister and brother, it is shed it abroad in your heart, in my heart. And it calls to you to love others. Amen. It calls to you to not to wait till a person is saved and then tell him you love him. Amen. You both to tell the right some of you love him. Because, amen, God loved us when we was ranked sinners. The Bible tells us God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He loved us, sister and brother, when we didn't have a clue who he was. But he loved us, amen, and he sent Jesus to bring forth those truths and to die for the sin of the whole entire world. We ought to tell him something. We ought to tell him thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Don't clock on the wall. Don't clock on the wall. And then that can know time for me to get out of here. But if you enjoy this radio program, will you write me a letter sometime? Walter Atkin Jr., Post Office Box 1142, Tarver, North Carolina. This is Walter Atkin Jr. saying, uh, a men and a men